Hey guys, Scott with Football Scoop. Um, was very happy to have Warren McCarty on the radio uh, Sunday night, Football Scoop Radio on, on ESPN. Uh, Warren represents a number of uh, Division II FCS, even a couple of FBS coaches. He's the type of guy who will take anyone's call, give him his thoughts. He's very open, very honest, very transparent. Um, I find he's been very helpful to a number of young coaches um, who I've heard back from. Uh, Warren's with MPIF, My Passion is Football. Uh, it's literally it's what the guy loves to do. It's a good listen. Uh, have a listen to what we, uh, we spoke about uh, on Football Scoop Radio this weekend. Warren, how are you, buddy? Man, I'm good, guys. I appreciate you having me on. So, uh, Warren McCarty, we, uh, I put out the call on Twitter this week saying, hey, guys, uh, hey, coaches, you know, I'm going to have a couple agents on the radio this weekend, educate everybody about how some things happen. Uh, I had a number of guys reach out and say, you got to get Warren on. He does more for, uh, for guys perhaps at the FCS D2 level than, than almost anybody else in the country. So, uh, very happy to have you on and appreciate you taking time. Oh, I'm definitely honored. I, again, I appreciate it. So, Warren, you know, we, um, you know, Football Scoop, I probably field a question a day, five questions a week, something like that, from coaches saying, you know, do I need an agent? You know, when when should I be thinking about an agent? What do they really do? You know, um, talk to me about guys, uh, and I want to focus on guys that, you know, say Division Two FCS level and FBS position coaches, you know, at what point in their career do you feel like they need representation, and, and what services are you explaining to them, you know, when you have that introductory conversation? Well, it, here's the thing. Uh, when a coach has his his feet wet and he's coached a couple of seasons and realizes, okay, this is for sure what I want to do as a career, right? Because a couple, you know, the dudes get done playing or, or what have you, and then they decide they want to get into coaching, and then they GA for two years and realize – Oh my God, this sucks. <laughs> well, I'll go sell insurance, or you know, I'll go into corporate America. But once dudes have done done their GA thing, and you know, maybe coached at a low level, and realize that they still want it, and that they want to be, or Scott used this term a lot, upwardly mobile. It, it, that they want to climb and make money and coach at the highest level possible. That's the point in time when they need to hire an agent. Now it's not. Um, you don't just, you know, go Google Jimmy Sexton and find his office number, you know, if you've GA'd at a D2 school for two years. But you do have to find somebody that's going to help you build your network. And in this business, when I started in it, I uh, was, was definitely naive in thinking it was truly about just being a good ball coach. And frankly, right or wrong, that's the, the last thing that generally comes up and this whole process is how good the, uh, of a coach the guy actually is. It's much more about uh, ability to recruit, ability to wear different hats, computer skills, people skills, social media skills, uh, who who he knows, where he's from, where he played. Those types of things matter. And in terms of sharpening that image, preparing a guy to actually interview well, and building a network and connecting with people, that's, that's the point in time where you really need an agent because that's, that's essentially what I do is, is help smooth out the rough edges and expand horizons in, in, a, in a lot of different ways. That's, that's what I tell guys all the time. I say, you know, it, it's great and all. You're a great ball coach, but unless you know people, you, you can't even get into the conversation. You ha- it's In this profession, it's a small, closed loop. you got to know people, so. and not just I've met them once. You need to have a real relationship with them. You need to go out to camps and clinics, spend some time with these people, develop relationships such that you're on their mind. And, you know, in the event something ever comes up, they're thinking about you, getting you on the short list. So, um, you know, when they get to the interview, how are you helping them with that process? Well, for my clients, and I'm sure there probably are a lot of agents that do this as well, we'll do mock interviews. And I'll go through the process of pretending to be, you know, the AD if it's a head coaching thing or the head coach if it's a, you know, position court, position coach or coordinator interview. You know, I'll serve in that role, and I'll throw out questions that I know get asked, you know, and we'll walk through it. And then if, the, if, if my guy answers it in a, in a, you know, not sufficient way, then we'll call timeout and talk through it and then ask it again and really literally coach them through the process and give them things to think about. And then also a lot of homework. 
you know, studying up on the roster, who the coaches on that staff are, who they play against, the history of the program, where they've been the last year, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. Know what you're getting into, and it's and, and that to me is the same as the corporate world, where you know, if you're going to interview at IBM, well, you better know about who you're interviewing with, what department it is, how IBM as a company is doing, good and bad, etc. You know, you're not necessarily just talking about you; you're also talking about them as well. So, and that's a, I think that's a big key that. A lot of young coaches miss as they go into the interview thinking that they're just going to be talking about themselves, where in reality you're talking about yourself and how you fit into what they do and what they want. Warren, let's talk a little bit for a second about head coaching opportunities. A head coaching position comes open, you know, D2, FCS, something like that. Mm -hmm. How are you, you know, what are you doing to get your clients' names into into the mind of the AD? Well, this this world is changing, and you and I have had a lot of discussions about this. First and foremost, I'm having to find out who the third term is that's handling the hire. And even at the Division II level, we saw several Division II jobs, including uh, one of my clients who got a head coaching job. It was handled through a search firm. And some search firms are better than others. Some search firms, like any other aspect of this business, go strictly off of people they know. Some search firms actually do due diligence and look at resumes. So step one, when a head coaching job comes open, I have to find out, you know, is the search firm handling it? If yes, then I make a contact to the search firm, which generally I know somebody there. Uh, if I don't, you know, I'm, on, I'm hounding them to, to get some, some mind share. And if it's just the AD and a committee handling it, same thing. I just go to the AD and, you know, we try to get a phone conversation going first so I get a chance to, you know, give the elevator speech about my client and then get that resume in front of them. But And, again, the resume isn't near as important as the references on the resume, the other guys that will speak highly about the coach. Warren, when you get into, you know, things are going well and, you know, it looks like it's going to be his job, you know, your client's mm-hmm. position, obviously – um, you know, people negotiate uh, compensation. But what else is really negotiable these days? Honestly, it's my experience with my last couple of head coaches who've, who've you know, gotten jobs. It wasn't so much the salary range. That kind of is what it is. You know, they have their budget and they know this is we can kind of spend and, you know, maybe I get them 10 or 20 more grand. We're talking FCS and, you know, Division two jobs. Yep. There's not a wide range of oh well instead of making four hundred grand you know we can pay him seven twenty five you know there's not that you know giant uh, disparity in potential earnings where I'm able to negotiate and help is a car um, uh, part of a timeshare for vacation time during the summer which is, is so important um, increasing the recruiting budget getting them to increase, even if it's by a few thousand dollars, the assistant coaching salary pool, um, medical benefits, all the other peripheral things that go into your total compensation package. So honestly, it's been a lot less about what that actual salary is versus the other perks, so to speak, of the job. And those things matter, you know, having a car payment versus, you know, two car payments for your family versus just one because you've got, you know, a vehicle provided by the school. You know, that, that's a dollar figure in savings, honestly. And then, uh, you know, in terms of being able to be a head coach, the next, the next thing that you got to talk about is can I retain staff or can I pay to have a good staff or a better staff than I'm inheriting? And that, that comes down to money, and that's where a lot of times the, the salary pool can be negotiated a little more. There's, t- there's means and ways to find a few extra bucks. Yeah, you know, I, I would echo that. When I hear that from guys all the time, um, that – you know, Scott, I practically didn't negotiate my salary at all. Whatever they said, I was fine with that. It's so much money. You know, coaches, you know, head coach salaries are so high these days that whatever they offer you is probably fair. Where, where I got the job or where I, you know, felt like the job wasn't appropriate for me to take was in what they said in response to my request for the salary pool for assistance. Um, Correct. You know, and control over who I can hire and who I can't fire and things like that. Um, that's what coaches want these days. They want to know that they can build a staff that they can win with. Absolutely. And just like your quarterback, 
you know, you can be the best quarterback in America. If you have a terrible O-line, things aren't going to go well for you. Well, the same thing for a head coach. You can be the, you know, the best head, head ball coach and CEO in America, but if you don't have a competent staff or a happy staff, things are going to be bad, you know. That's, that's crucial to, uh, you know, success. And I think that's, and kind of on a sidebar here, when I'm preparing guys to be a head coach or they've you know, got them as a candidate for a job, that's also one thing we do is we go get our staff put together on paper prior to that interview. So if that question comes up, do you know who you'd want to hire? Yes, I've got my OC, I've got my DC, I know who my quarterback's coach is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You get your guys lined up prior to that interview. Warren McCarty is our guest on Football Scoop here. Uh, you know, when you when you talk about guys wanting to be mo- upwardly mobile, how do you balance guys still pursuing those promotions and better jobs while also not being someone who neglects the, the job that they currently have or maybe establishes themselves as a reputation as someone who doesn't want to be in a certain place? That is a phenomenal question. And it's something that I talk about with my clients all the time. That's my job. Your job is to coach in the network. My job is to be thinking about your next job. My job is to be working behind the scenes to get you to your next rung on the ladder, so to speak. You coach, you network, you handle your business. My job is to be thinking about your next job. And as long as, you know, for for coaches out there, as long as they get that, then it's let your agent handle that; those types of things, the big picture stuff. You focus on your day to day, and you focus on building your coaching network, like like Scott was talking about at clinics, at, at AFCA, at you know, just picking up the phone and calling ten coaches a week to pick their brain on some X's and O's. That's a great way to start a relationship. But that's your that should be your agent's job is to be thinking about your next job, in my opinion. So. Warren, obviously, you know, November, December, January, February, when, when guys are actually renegotiating contracts and things like that, I know you guys are actively involved with that stuff. Mm-hmm. But what about the other eight, nine, ten months of the year? You know, what are you, what are you agents doing for your clients at that time? At that time, uh, for some of my guys, I'm trying to line up speaking uh, engagements, either at high school coaching clinics, at Glazer, at Nike, at what have you. Um, again, kind of building their brands, building their name, building their reputation, and giving them opportunities to go network with guys. And then, honestly, uh, and I'll, I don't think he'll mind me throwing his name out there. I'm, I'm on the phone with guys like Pete Limbo at Ball State, who are very much willing to talk to coaches that they don't know. Just 30 minutes talking at some X's and O's, let, letting a young guy pick their brain. Those are the, the, the D1 head coaches that I'm on the phone with throughout the spring. You know, setting up some time for my guys to go clinic with them, you know, uh, setting them up to go watch spring ball for a day or two. Because, again, it's mind share. And it's an opportunity for my guys to learn and also be seen and kind of start building their network that way. Face-to-face is so big. Um, so that's, that's pretty much, you know, during those other eight or nine months, I'm thinking about networking, networking, networking. Warren, if, uh, if a coach wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Uh, just hit me up on the website, mpifcoaching.com, and, and also it gives them an opportunity to see the other coaches that I represent. Uh, as you know, in this business, there's six degrees of separation. There's probably not a coach in America that doesn't somehow, some way know one of the guys in college or the NFL that I represent. And then, of course, my, my cell phone and email address and everything's on the website. So mpifcoaching.com. Warren's one of the good guys out there. He, uh, He's willing to take time to talk to any coach out there, give you very straight up honest advice, you know, whether something makes sense to him or not. And, uh, you know, it's the old, does, does this make sense? If it doesn't make sense, then let's not do it. You know, he's, uh, he's one of the guys that will tell you this isn't the right move for you. You know, don't, don't jump now. Um, I hear that from coaches all the time. Respect what you do, buddy. Absolutely. And, you know, if you think about it from the, the perspective of, okay, my life, my coaching career is going to be a book. What's going to be the next chapter? You want to avoid as many bad chapters as possible, right? You want them to be good chapters and, again, upwardly mobile chapters. And, and jumping ship is not always the best thing, and as in as is the case in so many things in life, grass isn't always greener either. So, but yeah, whether I'm representing a guy or not, love talking to coaches and just, you know, I'm, I'm definitely uh, always open to letting guys bounce stuff off of me, whether I'm their agent or not.
That was good stuff from Warren McCarty. I appreciate him taking time to join us. Again, guys, it's all about relationships, preparing you for to, to ascend in your career. Good advice. I don't think it's ever too early for a coach to reach out to, to representation. See if it's a good fit with you and him. If you click, um, Warren's a good guy. He'll give you a bunch of good advice. Uh, again, Warren McCarty of the MPIF. Thank <laughs> you.